How to Integrate Jira with Jenkins. We're used to using Jenkins to build, test, and package our applications. But have you thought about how you can also leverage Jenkins to help you with your other automations? Whether we want to or not, one of the tools that many of us use is an issue tracker. We can also use our jobs to manage updating the issues for us while the jobs are running. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can integrate Jira with Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller. It's version 2.303.2. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. I've also gone ahead and configured a shared library for this controller. And since we're integrating with Jira today, I am using Jira Cloud, and I have one project in it, and that one project has a single issue. The link to the gist that has all of the information that we're talking about in this video is down in the description. So first off, let's go back over to our controller and install a plugin. We're gonna click on Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, and go to Available. And the plugin that we're going to install is the Jira plugin. Now, there are numerous Jira plugins available for us to use, but the one that we are going to use is just Jira. And at the time of recording, it's version 3.6. So let's go ahead and select that. Download now and install after restart. And now we're back. So let's go back over and see how we need to configure this plugin. So we're going to manage Jenkins, configure system. And on the configure system page, we are going to look for Jira. And let's take a look at adding a Jira site. Now, this Jira plugin works with both Jira Self-Managed and Jira Cloud. So you should be able to follow any of the instructions that I'm giving you right now on either platform. So we're going to need a URL. A link URL is not required. That's just an alternate link. Issue patterns, if we're gonna go after specific issues. We need credentials and some other sizing, connection timeouts, thread sizes, whatever. So I think we're all we're really going to need is the URL, which I already have, and we're going to need some credentials, which I don't have yet. First things first, let's go over to Jira and set up our credentials. So we'll go into Jira, and what we're going to need to do is create an access token. So I'm going to go to here, account settings, and then once we're here, we'll go ahead and click on security. Let me go ahead and zoom in. And then we're going to create an API token. Now, in real life, what you would have, instead of using your personal account to create the token, you instead would have a service account living in Jira that you would use to set up the token. But for this example, I don't have a service account, so I'm just going to use my account. So we'll create an API token. The label is going to be Jenkins. Click on Create, and now it gives us a token that we need to unhide. I'm going to copy that and put it in my notes so I don't forget it, and do that. Great. We're going to go ahead and click on Copy. I already did that, and Close. Now, I'll never be able to see that token again, and also, if I ever need to rotate it, I would just revoke it. Now that we've set up that credential, the first thing I want to do even before we go back over to our controller, is I want to test and make sure that the access via that token actually works. So I'm going to open up a shell, and let's run a command. We're just doing curl, my credentials, which is my email address, colon, the token, and we're setting a couple of headers, and then we're hitting the endpoint where my Jira instance lives within Jira Cloud, and I'm passing in work3, which is the issue ID that exists. So if I go ahead and hit enter, what we get back is the JSON string for that issue work-3. So at this point, I know that this credential is working as expected. Now that we've verified the credential via the command line, let's go back over to the controller and create the credential. So we'll go back here to our controller, click on configure system, dashboard for now. We'll go ahead and leave because we're not ready to create that yet. Manage Jenkins, Manage Credentials, Global, Add Credentials. It will be a username with password. And the 
username is going to be my email address. The password is going to be the access token that we just created. The ID is going to be Jira REST API. And the description is going to be Jira REST API. So email, token, ID, and description. Click OK. Now that we've created that credential, let's go ahead and configure our Jira configuration. So we'll go back into Manage Jenkins Configure System. Let's look for Jira because it's a small section. Click on Add. Now my URL is going to be my URL that I've set up inside of Jira Cloud. I don't need to do anything with link URL. I'm going to leave all of the defaults being unchecked here. For the credentials, I'm going to go ahead and select the credential that we just created. And then finally, what I want to do is click on Validate Settings. We can see here that it was successful. So we're good to go from this perspective. Now let's test out what functionality that plugin gives us. So if we go ahead and create a new job, and I'm going to call this one uh, Test Jira. I'm going to create a pipeline and click OK. If I scroll down. I'm just going to use Try a Simple Pipeline, Hello World. We'll start with this. And then let's go to Pipeline Syntax and see if we have any steps available to us from that plugin. We can see here that we see three. We see Jira Comment, Jira Issue Selector, and Jira Search. So in my case right now, what I want to do is I want to add a Jira Comment. And now that we're on Jira Comment, let's add Issue Key, Work-3, and the comment body is going to be this comment was sent from Jenkins. So click on Generate Pipeline Script. Let's go ahead and copy this. Let's go back over to our job, and we're going to replace this echo line with the Jira comment with the body and the issue key. Let's go ahead and click on Save. But before we submit the job, let's go over to our Jira instance. Let's look at Test Issue, which is Work 3. And we can see at the moment that there are no comments on Work 3. So let's go ahead and close this up. Let's go ahead and run this job. So as it starts up, let's go ahead and watch it run. It's already complete, so we can see that it was running on the agent. We see Jira comment. So pretty quiet, pretty quick. Let's go take a look at our issue. If we refresh work three, what we see now is we have a comment that was made 16 seconds ago. This comment was sent from Jenkins. So that example was pretty simple, right? We went into pipeline syntax. We saw exactly the step that we wanted to use. We put in a little bit of data and we ran it. But what if we wanted to create an issue from within our pipeline? Is that possible? Well, of course, anything's really possible. But with this plugin, it's not. Now, there are other Jira plugins that allow you to create an issue. But let's assume for a moment that the only Jira plugin that I want to use is this Jira plugin we already have installed. And I know that I'm unable to create that issue. But how do you know that? Let me walk you through the way that you can figure out whether or not a plugin provides you the functionality that you need. So let's go ahead and go back into our controller and go back to Test Jira and click on Pipeline Syntax. Now, when we looked at this a little bit earlier, we saw our three steps that are exposed through the Pipeline Snippet Generator. We have Jira Comment, Jira Issue Selector, and Jira Search. And that's it, just those three. But there are other ways, potentially, that you could run a step. So let's take a look at our step, general build step options. And what this step step gives you is it will go through and look for any plugins that are exposing certain steps that don't have a specific pipeline step for themselves. For example, we can see here that the Jira plugin does expose a handful of other steps that aren't exposed as a pipeline step. So I could create a new version, or I could have a custom field updater for an issue, or mark a version as released, or progress issues by workflow action, or update relevant issues. So there are some other steps that are available to me 
within the plugin. However, they are not exposed as a typical pipeline step. And we can see here that none of these that are exposed via step are create a new issue. Now, one more place you could look is under the wrap step. Now, if we take a look at wrap, we could go through and look at these and see if there is anything available. And since there's none listed, we have no options. However, since we're writing pipeline, we can take advantage of our shared library and create a custom step within our shared library and make calls directly against the Jira REST API. As I said during the getting started section, I've already set up a shared library on this controller, but let's go take a look at the shared library. So if we take a look at this, what we have is we have a step that is called Jira create issue. And again, the link to this is over in the gist. What I'm doing is I am reading in a file called com planet pope api jira create issue.json. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. We're using the library resource step to load that string into a variable called raw body. And then we're going to be passing in values to our custom step, so jira create issue, and we're going to be passing in key, summary, description, and issue type name. Those will be the four parameters that we're going to pass in. What happens here is we also call a render template. And what render template does is it's going to take this raw string that we're reading in and take this data and merge that data set together. So therefore, the render is going to be the final JSON string that we're going to need to post to Jira. And we can see here at the very last step in line 10, we're going to do a curl. We're going to use our Jira credentials. And we're going to post it with the data, with the render string. And then finally, we can see here we're using the header content type of application JSON. And we're posting it to Jira URL REST API 2 issue. The links to the Jira REST API documentation are also included in the gist. Now, before we leave here, let's go back and take a look at library resource. So we have this path, com planet pope API Jira create issue JSON. And what we can see here is that we have basically just a JSON string that has some tokens with the dollar sign leading in front of it. And the render template process is going to take the data that we're passing in and merge it into the slots. So when we actually create the render on the backside of render template, this string will be whole with the data that we're going to be posting to Jira. So let's go ahead and go back into our controller. And let's create a new job. And we're going to call this create issue. Click on pipeline, click OK. And I have an example here that I'm going to paste in. And again, this will be down in the gist. What we have here is we're getting a handle to our shared library because that's where our Jira create issue step is. We're creating two environment variables, one for our Jira URL. Now, if I wanted to make this a little bit smarter, I could have reached into the Jira configuration that lives within Manage Jenkins and have extracted this data out. For simplicity, so you can follow along, I'm just declaring it here. We've also defined an environment variable for our credentials. Again, you could have lifted those from the Jira configuration. And then we're calling our step, Jira create issue. We're passing in four parameters, key, summary, description, and as I scroll, what we have here is issue type, name, and that happens to be bug. So what we're going to do is we are going to save this and run it. OK, as it's running, pulls in the shared library. We make the call over to Jira Cloud. So here is the body that's being posted over to Jira. We can see that here we're getting a 201 response, so it was created. And then we also get the response back, which in this case is it gives us the key for work-4. So let's go back over to Jira. 
click on work. And what we're going to see here is there's now a work for issue created from Jenkins. Why would you want to integrate Jira with Jenkins? By integrating Jira with Jenkins, you'll never forget to manually go back over into Jira and make changes like adding comments or adding labels or updating custom field values. All of that can be managed through the running of a job. And as we saw, even if a plugin does not have the steps or the functionality that you need in order to integrate with Jira the way that you want to, it's still actually fairly simple to integrate because you can write your own custom step within the shared library to do exactly what you want. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.